Hey, I'm joined here by Manish and we're going to have a look at VVOLS and how you set that up in FreePAR. Okay, so we're going to run through the process now of getting up and running with VVOLS. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go create a um, storage container for VVOLS and that's I'm using the SSMC to do that on the 3PAR side. And so, I believe that's new functionality in the SSMC. Correct. That's new in SSMC version 3.0, which was just released. Um, and, and that's the first version of the SSMC that has any VWAL support, because prior to this, all the SSMC versions did not have any VWAL integration. And so this is, this is the first one that does have it. So I'll just give it a name here. And what's it's the 8440? I'll click Create. So this again on the three part, it's a logical entity. We're not assigning any space or any you know CPGs or anything. It's just saying, hey, this is going to be a container. And is it generally one container system wide? Yeah, usually if you're using the whole array for for VVOLS, then yes, it's the whole container. We're just one container. You, there's nothing preventing you from doing multiple containers. If you want to segment maybe applications, you know, using separate their own containers, you could do that as well. Yep. Is that a change again? Because I believe at release it was only one. Correct. Container. In the initial version that we supported VVOLS in, which was 321, we did not support multiple storage containers. In 322, we now do support multiple storage containers. Okay, so the storage container is created. We'll now go to the vSphere side and basically add that as a data store is what we're going to do. Except now it's not a VMFS data store, it's going to be a VWAL data store. And of course this is now on a per VM basis versus the VMFS which was a shared data store. Correct. And it looks, okay, it just took a couple seconds I guess. So there it is, there's that discover container that we just created. Uh, we'll give it a name here on the ESX side. So discover VVOL storage container and here's all of my posts. Right now if you look that container that we just created, it's going to be empty. There's nothing in it. There's no we haven't created any VVOLs, so it's going to be an empty container. Right. So, so you don't just create the container on one side, you need to create that on both sides. Correct. Okay. Correct. On the on the three part side it's a container. On the ESX side, it's like creating a data store, but it's a VWAL data store. Got it, okay. So now let's go ahead and go create um, virtual machines. But before I create virtual machines, let me just talk about storage policies because they become you know, important in a, in a VWAL context. So policies are basically the array advertising its capabilities to vCenter. So we've already created a couple of policies, but I'll go create a brand new policy so you can see that, how, it, how that works. So I'll call it discover. And what we advertise from the arrays perspective is visible to the VM admin. So the capabilities that we expose are, you know, common provisioning group or CPG, a snapshot CPG, thin persistence, dedupe, and adaptive flash cache. So if I click on each one of these, I can pick and choose a CPG for my data volume. So maybe, you know, for this, this policy, I'm going to say my data is going to go on SSD RAID 5. I can then pick up a different CPG for my snapshots. When I take snapshots, maybe I don't want to use up my fast class space or my SSD space and put snapshots on my cheaper nearline drives. I can do that. So we're choosing what functions from the free part are presented through, which is essentially determining the availability and performance. Correct. For the VM. Exactly. And that all happens through the VASA provider that we have. And for us, the VASA provider is built into the array, so you don't really have to do anything other than turn it on. You don't have to do any you know, external VASA provider. It's all built in, HA is taken care of, so that you don't have to worry about all of that. So the other capabilities that we have, so thin persistence is all about space and keep staying thin, dedupe, and then adaptive flash cache. Those are all the capabilities from a three-part perspective that we expose to vCenter. So you can set all of those um, for this exercise, really, you know, the CPG and snapshot CPG are really what we care about. I'll click next. 
So again, for this um, for this policy, I said data was going to go on SSDs, snapshots on Nearland drives. So I, I, it'll find a compatible container. There's my Discover container that we just created. I'll click Next and Finish. So now I have this policy called Discover. So now we'll go create a VM. And the workflow of creating a VM that's sitting on VMFS versus VWAL is exactly the same except in one step. And that step that's new is here, if I pick a policy now, if I pick my discover policy, this VM will become a VWAL VM. So discover policy meant data on SSD, snapshots on near line. So it finds that discover storage container. And let's just do Linux for this one, doesn't really matter. So here's that disk that I have. With vVaults, everything is 10 provisioned by default, and so notice it's sitting on the discover storage policy. I can add a second disk to this VM and put that second disk on a different policy. That's how, um, how easy it is to slice and dice it. So the second disk, I can say instead of the discover uh, policy, I want to put it on my three-part gold policy. I'll click next, and before I click finish, I'll just want to switch to the CLI real quick. So on the CLI, um, this show view all command will list the existing um, VMs that are running vVault. So currently I have four VMs that are using vVaults and we'll click finish and you see my count went up to five. Here is my discover VM that I just created and if I give it this VB flag, you will see the individual volumes that are part of that VM. So here's the discover VM. So here's this config volume, here's my two, first data disk, here's my second data disk because it had two disks. And each one of these things that I'm highlighting are individual three-part volumes. And the new bit that we added into the SSMC is you can see this in the SSMC as well now. So if you look in the SSMC, um, if I click on virtual machines, you can see that same interface. So here's that discover VM and it will list the vVaults for that Discover VM here in the SSMC now. Okay, that's nice. If you're looking in the generic volumes view, can you tell which ones are vVaults and which ones are standard volumes? No, so that's why we added this, um, this special tab here. So if I go back, we added the special um, VMware you know, tab for storage containers and virtual machines. And if I clicked on virtual machines, I, I selected show me the vVaults. So it all, it's only going to show you the vVaults. If I had included all of the regular VB, let's say a 3 part had you know, 5,000 regular VBs and another 100 vVaults, this could go off the screen. And so that's why we segmented that. So you have the choice of just seeing the vVaults versus the regular VBs. So now I can go back um, to my vCenter. So I have this VM. Let's go find it. If I power on this VM, so I powered it on, a new volume got created, the swap volume. Because I powered on the VM, we create a swap volume for it. If I then take a snapshot of this VM, even though I'm taking the snapshot through virtual center, and I want to include memory in this one, we'll just do a regular snapshot. Snapshots with vVaults are now array-based snapshots. So we will now see a snapshot for each disk that I have. So if you look, um, there's my first snapshot, here's my second snapshot. And oh, by the way, since I had two disks for the VM, so here's that disk that on the SSD tier, and there's uh, and, and snapshots are set for the, for on, on the nearline tier. So that was the discover policy that I created. This other policy that I picked up was a golden policy. That, so the SSD tier was for data, and for that one, snapshots are going on the fast class tier. So if you look, the snapshots that we took, so this snapshot went on the nearline tier because it came from that discover policy. This other one went on the fast class tier. Okay, yes, defined by the policies we set earlier. Exactly. So that's the idea with vVaults is each VM basically gets its own set of volumes. And so if I'm manipulating this VM, I'm only touching its volumes, not anybody else's volumes. And it's a good point you make there that 
there are different types of VVOLs as well. Not just for data VVOLs, there's also the ones for the snapshots, for swap files, exactly. config, etc. Exactly, yeah. So you can see here, here's my config volume. It's got, you know, config, the VMX files, some metadata logs, etc. Um, yeah, so each one of these are individual volume on the three part side. So I've created this VM, I created some snapshots. Now if I go in here and let's say I power off this VM, we come back here, you'll notice the swap volume here will disappear because I powered off that VM, uh, maybe not yet. Is there any kind of limit on the number of VVOLs you can have on a single system? So we support a total of 128,000 objects today in version 3.2.2 and we tend to sort of um, increase that limit every major OS release. So I powered off that VM, that swap volume disappeared. If I then delete this VM, you will see um, these volumes start to disappear on the three part side. So yeah, it's already actually gone. So that VM got deleted. The volumes that belong to that VM are being reclaimed on the three part side. So space reclamation is now automatic. Okay, cool. So as you can see, that VM is no longer there. Okay, that's been very useful. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you.